Hey guys, Curtis here, tip of the day. I'm gonna bring these back. We're gonna try and get up to 100 before the uh, bar box in January. We got some big tournaments, we got Christmas stuff tournaments. So I wanna try and really focus on getting the tips of the day back. A lot of, I got some great feedback. I just got a little busy with starting up leagues and stuff like that, but I'd, I'd like to get back. I'm getting great feedback. Before I do, I wanna mention one thing. For this channel to get to where it needs to go, and there's a ton of opportunity in terms of live streaming on YouTube, some of the great matches we have for the gold, silver, even the bronze, league night, all these matches that are going on every night in the pressure pit over there, we can be live streaming these on YouTube, but I need a thousand subscribers. I, I, I'll look into it further, I'm not sure why, but again, it's cool. the more people so if you can like and share this it's great for the channel obviously but in order for the channel to to have reach and to be able to do what it's capable we do need a bunch we've got lots it's free it's just as simple as pressing subscribe honestly it's super easy and it's great for pool it's going to be we're, we have a lot of content here at tailgaters and i want to expose the players i can start doing even player interviews stuff like that but we need a base so if you could do that that would be great doesn't cost anything and the, b the bonus is anytime I do any of the interviews tips a day you'll get a notification that you can watch it so we got some great new uh, software that will allow for us to, to live stream some of the stuff that's coming e even better with commentating so I'm excited about these things but we do need a platform YouTube seems to be a good way but you need kind of a base so if you could help me out with that that'd be fantastic today I'm going to go through a, a simple pattern that I saw someone do the other day in 8-Ball and I'm going to show you why it's not the easiest way to choose it and what is the easiest and why. This little simple pattern seems so simple but it's the reason that even like average players don't get out with ball in hand when they should because they are making it harder. You can do it the way you tried it or, but the thing is you're never going to be as consistent if you don't use a couple of these principles and I'm going to show them to you. So it's a simple game of eight ball. So what the person did was you get ball in hand and this is mistake number one. He shot this, this, then he went to here, and then he went to here. So what you want to think about, and these type of small little examples come up all the time in 8-Ball, it's you always want to take the highest ball first. So you see in this case, this is above this, and this is above this. Because if you, if you for example, on this, if I stop it, I've already got shape. If I'm shooting this, I'm coming out into zones where i got to get shape. So principle number one, shoot the high ball when they're, if they're in a line as well, you want to shoot the one that's slightly higher if you can, because if you stop it, then you're probably already got shape. But as soon as you shoot the lower one, you got to get shape. So don't play shape when you already got shape. That's number one. So what we would do in here, and here's principle two is, if you did choose this one, you can draw this over to here. But again, as some of the other videos we showed, drawing means you're shooting it here, it's coming forward, stopping, and then coming back. Even sliding, it's stopping, and then coming across, it's stopping. When you use roll, it's already going in its natural position. That's why it's called natural shape. So when you give yourself ball in hand, to get over there, if you just give yourself a slight angle and you roll it through, it cannot help but get over there because it's already going there. So you don't want to draw into shape if you don't have. So from here, if, again, I would like a little angle. So if I just stopped it here, which is easy to do. Now, here's another principle, okay? Very important. You can make this and stun it along here. It's not bad. But what most pros, if you watch, especially if they don't have too much angle, what they do is they try and put a little roll with inside so that it's coming down the line. So that's the last principle. You're coming down the line. If you're doing this, you're coming across the line, meaning like, yes, so right here is more narrow. If you're coming down the line, you've got way more margin for error. So in a case like this, I mean, again, 
what you don't want to do is you don't want to complicate it, and it depends on your skill level. Just making this, giving yourself a shot, there's nothing wrong with that. But as you advance, just remember, you'll see, watch when you watch on TV a lot of the pros. It will always be this option so that they're coming towards the line, right? They will always come down the line as opposed to cross the line. So that's another principle. So I'm gonna show you just a quick little exercise that you can do. This is a lot of fun. It's very, very simple, but this is one of the best, um, to me, in my opinion, this is one of the best little eight ball finishers that you can do. You put, a, you could do the striper solids. You put a stripe here, you put one on the second diamond, so basically, sorry, you, you put it in between, so just lower. So first diamond, in between diamond. You put it here, in between, and first diamond. And what you want to do is to start with is you want to see how many times you can run these three and the eight, okay? So once you do that, then what you would do is you would do the same mirror image down here. So you'd run three, get back down here, three, and then the eight, okay? But to start with, you got to, what I would say recommend is you got to do it three in a row before you can go to here. It sounds easy, but again, you want to start with maybe something like this. Because if you take this ball as an example, now you have to draw or get into shape. I'm not saying you can't do it, but what I'm saying is when you get ball in hand, let's make this easy. If I shoot this straight in, now here's an example. You got a couple of options. You can draw into here, which is very doable. I personally, I mean, again, it depends on your angle. If you can roll it, it is easier, but it seems like I'm a little shy. So again, just go follow through, stay still. And then you would come here. Here's another cool shot. If you cut this in, this is, I mean, the last thing I'm going to say about this principle, because this is just an exercise that you got to work. This happens so often. It's, this is out in the open, okay? So n I do this myself a lot when I'm getting lazy. This is something, remember this. When you got a shot here, and this goes in many pockets, you don't shoot this and say, I'll be all right. You have to pick a spot that you want, a pocket, visualize it. Not only will this help you not freezing on this or finding that spot that's not good it will give you instant feedback to where when you stroke so for example i like the idea so you know it's i would say this i'm going to make this i'm going to come across here i'm going to bounce off here and i'm going to land right here for that in the corner if i don't do it what is great about this it's i can at least get feedback and learn from what I didn't do right. If you just say, I'm gonna cut this and come somewhere over here, you're not getting any feedback. So remember that. It sounds like a small thing, happens all the time. You wanna say that I'm gonna hit the second rail and be straight in this corner. So I follow my machine, I come into here, and I have a plan. If it doesn't work, then I can evaluate why. So I come in here, so exactly so. Bump the rail, I'm okay, I can shoot it in here, but I didn't have enough top on it, or in this case, I, for the next time, I would say maybe from that angle, the better play is to come to here and there. I, was, I thought I would be about here, so then I would be here. I didn't want to bring the side into the, in the play. But again, all of this that I'm now computing is possible because I didn't just shoot that ball in and say anywhere is good. That one little thing alone, when you get down to these last balls, will help you finish little games where you frustratingly don't do it. And you're like, I've been in situations where I get in that, I hit it too hard and I've frozen on this ball. So you're like, I could have been anywhere but there. But your brain didn't know exactly where you want to go. So that's the last tip. I want you guys to practice that little routine. You got the ball here, here and here. See how many, if you do it three times in a row, these three balls, then the eight, then I want you to do the same thing, mirror image, those three, those three, and then the eight. Do that. And once you can start finishing that, that's one of the strongest eight ball finisher exercises that I've seen. Sounds simple. Trust me, it's not as simple as you think, but it's all within your scope of, so it's not about doing something that you can't do. 
It's about how often you do something that you can do that will raise your winning percentages, okay? So thanks, that's tip of the day, the new one that I'm doing, and we'll come back. I'm gonna try and do as many as I can leading up to the big bar box in January, okay? Thanks, guys.